Hello to you out there. Good day. Today I want to demonstrate to you launching an instance on OpenStack Newton. Uh, this is January 2017. The latest stable release of OpenStack is the OpenStack Newton. And I will be demonstra demonstrating to you how to launch an instance on it. So I logged in to my uh, OpenStack installation. Uh, the version I have is the OpenStack new thing. So uh, if you have a lot of projects, you can click here and select the projects you want. I am here and I'm going to click admin. On Honda admin, uh, I'll go to compute and instances. So I will be also, uh, uh, an important thing I will also be demonstrating to you is the use of cloud in it. The cloud in it can be used to modify your OpenStack instance at launch. So during launch, you can do a lot of things uh, on your instance. And one important fact with that is you have a root, you have the root privilege. You can do everything you want at that point on your instance. For example, this is an instance that of a cloud in it that I have for my uh, for, for my instances so what do I have here uh, I have that I can run command to install packages to start services enable services I can create a user I can uh, inject an SSH public key into the also authorized key file for that user I can up upgrade the packages on the system. I can install even more packages. And at the end of the day, when all these operations are done, I can do a reboot of that instance. So you can do what you can do depends on what you want. For example, if you are launching uh, 100 instances and you want that, those instances to have a particular user, you know, or uh, this is a good way to make sure if the user you want is created and maybe you need them to have a particular SSH keys, you, you can inject the your SSH keys into those instances. You know, this is, um, this might be a better way rather than having something like a golden image to modify your instance at launch. So let's get to it. Let's go to the dashboard. So on my dashboard, I click launch instance so uh, this pops up so I'm gonna give the instance name to be server 2 I already have a server name server 1 so this is all I have to do here or uh, if I want to create more more than one instance uh, I can put the number here but I want to create one also, the availability zone, if you have more than one availability zone, you can select. So I click next. So source, source is the source of the image or of the instance. Where do you want to launch it from? If you want to launch it, launch it from an image, from a snapshot or volume or volume snapshot. Another thing that you'll see here is uh, this option to create volumes. So if so, you this gives you option to create an additional cinder volume and attach it to your instance at boot, at uh, launch. But you have to be careful with the size of the volume. If you put a smaller size that, than what your instance requires, your launching is going to fail. So here, I'm actually going to say no. But I will add the instance I want to use is the CentOS image. The source I'm going to use is the CentOS image. So after this, I click Next. The flavor is how big or how small do I want my instance to be? To be. You can go from, you can have, depending on your environment, you can have other flavors. But these are the standard OpenStack flavors. Uh, and you have to keep in mind the flavor you are going to use should have enough uh, disk space, especially to handle 
the operating system you choose. So if you choose a very tiny flavor for operating system that, that requires uh, more than one gig, then your, your launch is going to fail. So here, I'm actually going to select medium. So medium, I have two virtual CPUs, four gig of RAM. Total disk is 40 gig. Root disk is 40 gig. Ephemera uh, disk is zero. And I'm saying, okay, on, uh, this is public. So this is a public flavor, actually. I click next. On the next, I have to select my network. What kind of network do I want to attach to the interface? So I have a couple of networks here. So depending on your environment, you have to select your network. So I select my int network. So uh, I have this. Uh, next, network ports. So network ports is if you have a particular network port that you created earlier, uh, those ports are going to show up here if the if those kind of ports exist. But I don't have any ports in existence, so I'm going to click next. Next is the security group. Uh, here, the default security group is the only thing I have. If you have other security groups, they, they are going to show up on this page. But I have the only default security group, and it is attached by default. So I click Next. Next is a uh, key PS, the SSH key PS. So uh, you have to, so SSH keys are one of the best ways to uh, assess your instances. So if you don't have an SSH keys, you, you can create one. So there's an option for you to create. So I'll create create key PA. Or uh, I'll say just the key. That is the golden key. Uh, create key PA. So you see, uh, the private key was downloaded for me automatically. So the down the private key you are going to have opportunity to download it at this point only. If you don't download it at this point, you are not going to have access to this key anymore. So so you can see it's again it's a note you will not be able to download this key later. So keep that in mind. I can add the key to my instance. Oh. Uh, I click next. So this is uh, the customization script. So this is, you can use this customization script is where the cloud init comes in. Uh, it is called user data. So the user data can actually be the cloud init format that I have here, or it can actually also be a shell script. So if you want to type a shell script, you can uh, like, give the the path to the shell you want and type your shell script here uh, but i am going to use the user script uh, the, the uh, cloud init that i have here i copied it and i paste it here you can actually also load it from afar but i'm pasting it so what so this uh, this is going to all these operations are going to be done on my instance uh, during this launch. Next is our uh, server groups. So if you have uh, server groups uh, that you've created before, they are going to be available here. I don't have any, so I click next. Uh, and one important thing, if you don't understand what is going on, you can actually click the help. So here the help says scheduler int allows you to pass additional placement related information to the compute scheduler. So uh, I don't I'm not gonna do anything here. So I'm gonna click next. Metadata. If you so metadata are like uh, information about they are like KPI value, so that give you more information about the particular instance. I don't have any here, but you can add one. So, for example, let's say I want to say that the HTTPD version that I'm going to install on this machine is going to be 2.4.14. Uh, 
uh, I will add it. Uh, so, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm supposed to let me remove this actually. I'm supposed to say httpd underscore version. This is the value. And here I give it, uh, this is the key. Sorry, HTTP is the key. The value is 2.4.14. Uh, so this can be, uh, uh, you know, this uh, metadata actually very uh, informative to you that can, it can allow you to quickly look up this instance if you if you, there are a lot of instances or another one i can say is a uh, i can say or uh, maybe this is a web server indicate that uh, this is a web server and maybe it's here hard uh, true that yeah, true this is a web server so those are the metadata so having uh done all this we are ready to launch our instance so you will see on this dashboard some of these uh, options are not mandatory actually but some of them are mandatory so if you click on something like networks network is mandatory source is mandatory uh, details is mandatory uh, metadata is actually not mandatory or uh, configuration is not mandatory but you know, you, it depends on well, what you want to do. It gives you opportunity to do more than uh, the minimum required. So after giving all the uh, options that we want to add, we click on launch. So it is going to launch our instance. So now we wait for it to launch. So you see, it says server two or the task. So this is the operation that is going on right now spawning or uh, it's already this is the name of the image we used it assigned an ip address of 192.168.1.6 or the medium so right now you say uh this instance has no state so it is still spawning it uh, let's give it a couple of uh, uh minutes or, or seconds but one thing we can do while we wait for it to spawn is associate, associate and a floating IP. A floating IP is an IP that, that enables you to access the instance from an external uh, source. The IP that we attached earlier was an internal IP. With this IP, we are not going to be able to access this instance from outside so we'll click here and say associate floating ip so here if we have any floating ip in existence we can select from here if not we we'll click the hard button to create a new floating ip or allocate ip we'll wait uh, and say associate so now we have associated the floating ip to this instance. Uh, the other actions you can take on this instance will be available for you here. You have to keep in mind, the options that will be available for you here depends on the kind of right that you have. I am logged in into this uh, cloud via as an administrator. If you are not the administrator of your cloud, you won't have a lot of these options. Some options will be taken away from you so if you don't see all these options uh, uh, you have to keep that in mind so uh, we have uh, launched our instance we can click on the instance actually uh, so get more details so you see these are the details that was associated with this instance um, and we can go to log log will tell you what is going on right now what up or what is running on the instance we can click on console so with the console if you need to console into you in the system you can do this action log is uh, actions like maybe create shutdown restart that was done on this uh 
instance. So, um, so I think the, the, uh, those are the essential things that are associated with launching an instance on uh, OpenStack. Uh, maybe one quick thing I can show to you is maybe to attach a volume. Let's say we want to attach a sender volume to this instance. We can go to volumes here. Or uh, under volumes, we can say create volume. Or uh, you can create it uh, volume, volume, let's say volume two. Uh, so our type is Iscosy, size is one gigabyte. And create. Uh, wait for it to create the volume. So the volume is created. So we'll go under the drop down and say manage attachments. Under the manage attachment, we select the instance we want to associate this volume with. We want to associate with server 2, attach volume. Uh, wait. So let's go back to the uh instance uh actually okay if, if we click the instance again or uh, see now we see volumes attached volume 2 was attached as dev that's slash dev slash vdb so if we log in into this server we'll see uh that this uh volume is actually available actually let's log into this server or uh, since I have associated uh, a floating IP, we can connect to this server from uh, outside. So SSH, so the username that I created from the cloud in it is India. The floating IP, so you remember I injected uh, an SSH key, you remember uh, here? I injected an SSH key. So the private key, I have it. I'm going to use it to log in. So you see, and I'm waiting to log in to the instance. So this is one a way to modify. So I am logged in to modify the behavior of your instance. So you don't need to worry about the default name that came with the image or the default or name or default uh, password you can create your own name and password and easily log in with uh, the particular key that you have so if i do ls block so you see this is the volume that we attached to this instance so i think this is uh, enough for this video i will make other videos uh, about what you can do on openstack uh, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you benefited from this video. Uh, so see you later in some other videos. Take care. Bye.